Have you ever seen Brian Callan smile like this at any other person in your entire life? I don't think so. I don't think I've ever seen Brian have this big fucking smile on his face ever. And the only reason he's got this smile on his face is because he was lucky enough to go to Austin, do some comedy shows and appear on none other than the Joe Rogan experience. And considering everything Brian's been through, from being accused of rape and being a bit of a fucking, you know, a bit of a menace in the old changing rooms, Rogan put him on an extended bit of timeout. He refused to mention Brian Cannon's name for like a year plus, which is really odd because for a period in time, Rogan's kind of gone off it as well, which is kind of smart in his regard. But Rogan did, if I'm not mistaken, he was very smart in that he made sure to like stop mentioning cancel culture as much as he did in the past. Because if you remember, um, Rogan was a really staunch anti council culture type of guy. But then out of nowhere, he just suddenly stopped speaking about it. And I feel like the reason why he did that was because of what Brian Callan was going through. He didn't want to seem like a hypocrite. So he kind of just stopped talking about it. And he stopped mentioning Brian Callan's name for like, I feel like a year plus. Then when the kind of heat died on Brian Callan and the accuser stopped basically going on press runs, you know, recounting her story and the husband stopped calling comedy clubs and trying to get him cancelled. And he basically moved on and pretended it didn't happen and offered no evidence or no ulterior narrative as to what actually may have occurred. Everyone kind of forgot about it. That's what happens, unfortunately, with these cancel culture things. He then popped up suddenly and everything came back to normal, right? So now this motherfucker is out here normally like nothing has happened and now he's allowed back on rogan like everything's okay and this is what i mean about these guys friendships must be really odd because if i'm brian callan i'd be a little bit annoyed if i honestly don't like again i think most likely the allegations are somewhat true if i'm just speaking from you know my own personal opinion from what i can read and what i've seen and being a fan of the podcast of firing a kid before it you know went before it got to shit and before brendan's ego got out of control and how brian talks about women and how he generally talks about life in general and his approach to dating and hooking up and shit i've got a feeling that that account from those women in the at los angeles times most likely 70 percent of it is true at least 70 percent. if that's the case right no sorry in the case of brian callan most likely he doesn't think it's true if i'm brian callan and i know joe rogan he's my friend and he has one of the biggest platforms in the world i would be a little bit annoyed that he didn't invite me on his show i'd be a little bit pissed off he didn't invite me on to defend myself to say my piece to kind of clear the air and set the record straight it, it kind of annoyed me that he kind of would go out of his way to excommunicate me right to excommunicate me and sort of like you know push me out there in my opinion i'll be a little bit annoyed by that personally um but you know these guys clearly don't really give a fuck but i'd be pretty much annoyed if that was the case so brian's back on jerry having a good time fucking enjoying it which is funny um considering you know how everything kind of played out but it also goes to show that bad people get away with bad things all the time i feel like this idea that sometimes people get their just deserves and it's always going to come back around is very much false and it's not really kind of um representative of what happens in the real world in the real world if you have money and if you have connections if you have influence whatever it may be you can basically weather any storm and council culture is just a storm most regular people like you and I, we couldn't survive a counseling, right? Because it would put us out of work. We couldn't get another job. Most likely our house will go into foreclosure or whatever it may be. We might get kicked out of a place that we're renting. And then we're suddenly living back out in our homes inside our mom's basements on fucking message boards, right? That might be our actual fucking future. But if you've got money like a Brian, Brian Callan, think about this this way, right? Brian Callan went through his fucking rape allegation. If I'm not mistaken, the same time he was going through his rape allegation, he's also getting divorced from his first wife, the wife that he's got those two kids with. One of the settlements of that divorce was he had to pay alimony, right? And I think, and you know, what do you think called um, child, whatever, services and pay, whatever you have to pay with your kids. If I'm not mistaken, when I read that article on TMZ, it was somewhere in the region of like 10,000 to 20,000 a month. He had to pay in alimony and in, you know, to look after the kids, money for the fucking ex-wife. So imagine you're getting cancelled, right? So you've been basically cancelled from Hollywood. 
you don't have your episode called, you know, your series called Schooled or many more, you know, an offshoot of the Goldbergs. You're not appearing in any Joker movies in the cameo in the background anymore. Your Hollywood career is done. You have to basically do stuff with fucking Ben Shapiro now, right? You don't, you don't got any ability to make any mainstream stuff anymore. You go through a divorce. You have to pay alimony. You're not on a podcast anymore because you can't get in a fire on the kid because, you know, the sponsors don't want you on there. So how did Brian Callen survive basically looking after his ex-wife and his, his first, his two kids and this new wife he's got and this baby? Clearly because the guy's got a fucking incredibly rich dad who worked for a fucking big bank in Middle East and shit and did what he did. But that's the proof that cancel culture really only, you know, you're only able to survive that shit if you're maybe, I don't know, really rich basically and got the ability to kind of weather the storm and basically sit on the sidelines for a while. That's the only way you can kind of survive because how else can you figure out a guy that doesn't, you know, is not selling out theatres, does mostly club gigs and shit, um, wasn't on the front of kid for a while because you know Brendan put him on a timeout, even though he was getting money from it. Still, he wasn't allowed to come on the show sometimes or for a long per, per, you know period of time. Rogan wouldn't have him on. Um, he wasn't on Crowder back then, so he was making alimony payments, looking after the new wife, who, from all accounts, doesn't work from what we've seen so far as well. Is a stay-at-home mom. Like it only needs money. You only have to have money to survive that. So if you've got money, effectively, which is kind of gross, you can get away with murder. That's the only sad bit about it. You can get without or get away with absolute murder if you have money. You can fucking weather any storm and essentially always kind of come out of it with this big smile on your face on the JRE, having an absolute whale of a time and not answering or addressing or clearing up any allegations because you don't need to, because you're better than that and because it's no one's business, you know? So big up Brian Cannon in that respect. Big up him in that respect. Um, what are you guys saying in the chat? What happened to Crowder Gig? I don't really know Log Log Logos Cartel. I have no idea what happened to the Crowder Gig. He said on the Friday the Kid he's going to be there again in August sometime, which is odd because I felt like that Crowder Gig was a regular thing. They made a big push about the promo Crowder did with all the other guys and blazers and shit, walking and looking all alpha. And now suddenly Brian's hardly on there. Um, I don't know what's happening there. Maybe it's a maybe that was always a plan. Who knows? Did all the previous fight companions not have chat? Yeah, no, no, they never had chat. No, sorry. Am I mistaken? Yeah, Fire Companions have never had chat. Or am, or am I bugging out? I don't think they've ever had chat, personally. I don't remember them having chat. I've watched them before on YouTube. I don't remember them ever having chat. Um, Rogan's businessman. He doesn't want all that stuff on his platform. He would get all the dork scientists after the film Creep True. Uh, John Duncan Trussell, 27, says so it's crazy. Crowder get there, Crowder there. Crowder on was on high. Oh, he was on hiatus. Really? Okay. Was he on? Thank you, Trisha G. Was he on hiatus because of the allegations that his wife made, or is it because that he just takes a break? Okay, cool. I didn't know Crowder was on hiatus. I had no idea about that. Actually, to be fair, that that baby that basically explains it. Then that basically explains what happened. Um, and then we're gonna go and check this. We need to check this though. This is one of my favorite clips. It's the it's called the betrayal, <laughs> the be Brian's betrayal of Papa. This is fucking incredible because I'm not too sure what happened, and I'm a bit confused. And I want you guys to help me here, right? What do you guys think happened here? Do you think most likely Brian Callen was invited to Austin a day before Brendan on the Thursday to go and hang out with Joe on his show to do a jury? and then appear at the Comedy Mothership, which he did, right? Brian Callan appeared at the Comedy Mothership and he's now being followed by the Comedy Mothership. So he's got the double fucking stamp of approval. And if I'm not mistaken, um, Brian Callan's picture is up on the Comedy Mothership Instagram too, if I'm not mistaken. Let me quickly check. I'm pretty sure I saw it there. I'm pretty sure I saw Brian Callan's picture on there. So I'm not too sure what happened. Did Rogan tell Brian not to tell Brendan? Or was it always kind of agreed that, you know, he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't let Brett, because it's kind of, it's kind of wild what's happening here. Let's see if I can find it. I think he might be on this show. with Bert. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, Brian's there. Brian's got his official picture listed on the fucking Comedy Mothership Instagram page, right? There, looking all manly and man-dragony. And if you go on the following list, 
because clearly I think the the fucking process of getting followed on the comedy mothership. See, he's already followed there. You can already see him. I don't have to search his name. Brian, the kid Callan is already on there. So clearly their approach to kind of stamping you as a friend of the comedy mothership is that you got you got to have either a show coming up or you already played there. But, you know, you have to basically perform at the club to get followed. So it's clearly, you know, this is basically the, bro, Joe Rogan's version of the 1000, right? He said there's only 1000 true comedians who happen to all be American, right? There's no international comics there for the most part. But 1000 of the best comedians happen to all live in America. And if you're part of the 1000, you're going to be you're going to be here as well. So this might end up hitting 1000 also. That's basically my point. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you guys think Rogan told Brian not to tell Brendan that he was going to come to Rogan's show club? Or do you think it was something that just happened spur of the moment? What do you guys think happened? I'm really curious to hear your fucking um, clues on this. This is of the Kids subreddit. Brian's uh, betrayal of Papa. Let's see if this plays properly. Please do. Oh, the sounds are on now. Say Friday, Saturday. Yes, we are. This weekend, I'll see, Daddy. I got Cap Cities Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yes, we are. I will see you Friday. I only get there to Friday. Beautiful. So I'll Come see you Friday on. and Saturday. Let's have some fun. Are you, how much? Uh, I want. Have we, we? We should call Rogan after this because you're gonna be how long on the companion? Because your show's at what time? I think my shows in Cap Cities are probably seven thirty, and I don't know. Because the I think the main card starts at eight <laughs> uh, Central Time. Yeah, so eight o'clock. So no. Um, Saturday. Seven and ten. ten, so you definitely missed that. Yeah, I'll be. I'll hit the I hate a ten eight. o'clock start, but oh. yeah. Um, yeah, Boy, so you, can't see my face. In that. So even even if we did, uh, I mean, if we start at, I mean, yeah, we'd have to start at five. You're not making a companion. I don't think I am. No, I thought there was a prelim thing, and we're starting at four, but we're gonna all have dinner. I think. Yeah, we're having dinner, but four. I don't want to be from. Four. I'm not. No, we're gonna have dinner at ten. six. Yeah, no. So I'll join you guys for din din. And then we'll go from But there. even you can't do a campaign for a fight night, do the early prelims from why don't four you guys to uh, why don't you guys skip the command and come watch me? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you good seats. <laughs> Cap Cities. Um I might be able to make your ten o'clock show. I'd like it. See what you can we'll do. We'll see how long the campaign because can uh, we'll see. See what you can do. So the campaign goes from eight to ten ish. You Jump start on. at ten. Ah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I'll be the Friday, buddy. Good buddy. I'm but I'll be the Friday, buddy. Good buddy. I'm but I'll be the Friday, buddy. <laughs> good buddy. <I'm> <laughs> What do you think happened? I've got a feeling because Rogan is so particular about who appears on his fucking podcast and because of how much disdain he treats people that he doesn't like and he makes it very clear that, hey, this is my fucking platform. This is my safe space. I only want people on here that I actually like or actually want to be on here. I've got a feeling he does that with the club as well. I've got a feeling that Rogan has a fucking iron grip on the bookings of that club. In the same, you know, obviously he works with Adam Eager, the former guy that works at the comedy store. But I think Rogan is very involved in the bookings of that club. So for whatever reason, he's decided Brendan isn't good enough to perform at the comedy membership, even though he told him to do fucking comedy and, you know, helped him fucking get the special and supported him when he did it. Had him on his fucking podcast promoting You'd Be Surprised and Google Pappy. A part of me feels like Brendan has a point to be annoyed because if I was Brendan, I'd be kind of annoyed. Like you supported me with, you'd be surprised. You supported me with, with Gringo Papi and had me on your podcast, but now you won't have me play perform at your club. And you also had me perform with you doing Joe Rogan and friends at the comedy store or laugh factory or laugh house, whatever it makes no sense. Anyway, cool. Rogan had a, you know, crisis. You know, so Rogan had a fucking revelation and decided to be a bit more strict with his friends. Um, in terms of the club he has cool. But I've got a feeling Brendan definitely told Brian, hey, don't mention to Brendan that you're going to perform me on Thursday. Don't mention it beforehand. So most likely they're going to act like, yeah, it just happened spur of the moment. He was just there. But he was always going to perform there. That was always going to be the plan. He was going to, always going to, he flew in there specifically on the Thursday to perform at this fucking comedy mothership, which makes sense because it's a big deal for Brian. But it's a clear indication, if ever, that for sure, Brian just Brendan just isn't going to perform there anytime soon it's not happening because this would have been a perfect opportunity to get to kill two birds with one stone have Brian and Brendan play the same day have maybe Brendan open for Brian then Brian open for Bert whatever it may be that would have been perfect to have them on the same day so the fact that Rogan didn't make that 
thing happen didn't is is a thing and clearly brendan will drop everything for rogan anyway he's shown it in the past and even in even in this instance actually it's actually quite interesting if you if you watch this right if you watch a lot of this you'll see that especially in that earlier clip i played you kind of get the feeling that brendan is kind of i would say looking down on brian but he's a little bit surprised that brian wouldn't want to you know cancel his shows to go on the fight companion he doesn't get it like why wouldn't you want to do but clearly brian kind of won you know he kind of figured out a better solution he was able to get a solo show with just him and brogan which is far more valuable than sitting on with them as a fire companion and he was able to perform at the comedy membership the hottest club in the world right and so he kind of won in that respect so i don't know man i've I, I kind of feel bad for Brendan. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> because this for me is a curse. If that if I was Brendan, I would know for sure now I'm never performing at this guy's club until he thinks I'm funny enough. I'm never performing there. Because he went out of his way to tell Brendan, Brian, sorry, hey, don't tell Papa that you're coming here, please. Because Brian had every opportunity in that clip to mention it and he didn't say nothing. He just kind of kept his mouth fucking shut. So that makes me think most likely Joe Rogan said, Shh. Let's play it one more time. This weekend, oh, sorry, I got Cap Cities Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yes, we are. I will see you Friday. I only get there to Friday. Beautiful. So I'll see Come you Friday on. and Saturday. Let's have some fun. Are you, how much? Uh, I want, have we, we, we should call Rogan after this because you're going to be how long on the companion? Because your know, show's at what time? I think my shows and Cap Cities are probably 7 30 and I don't know. Because I think the main card starts at 8 uh, Central Time. Yeah, so 8 o'clock. So, no, um, Saturday, 7 and 10. 10. So you definitely missed that. Yeah, I'll be. I'll hit the I hate a 10 8. o'clock start, but. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah Boy, so, I can't see my face in that. So even, even if we did, uh, I mean, if we start at, I mean, yeah, we'd have to start at 5. You're not making a companion. I don't think I am. No. I thought there was a prelim <laughs> thing and we're starting at four, but we're going to all have dinner, I think. Yeah, we're having dinner, but four. I don't want to be from four. I'm not. No, we're going to have dinner at six. Yeah, I know. So I'll join you guys for Din Din and then we'll go from But there. even you can't do a campaign for a fight night, do the early prelims from why four. Don't you guys, uh, why don't you guys get the command and come watch me? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you good seats. At Cap Cities. Um, I might be able to make your 10 o'clock show. I'd like it. See what you can we'll do. see how long the campaign because uh, we'll see. See what you can do. So the campaign goes from eight to ten ish. You Jump start on. at ten. Ah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I'll be the Friday, buddy. Good, buddy. I'm but I'll be the Friday, buddy. Good, buddy. I'm but I'll be the Friday, buddy. <laughs> Good, buddy. I'm oh, I love how he never mentioned it. I love how he never ever mentioned. It. He had every opportunity to mention that he was gonna be on fucking Rogan, that he was gonna be doing the fucking comedy mothership. He didn't mention it one bit. He just cool man cool yeah i'll be there i guess you know i'll be there sometime soon i guess mm, hoping so <laughs> i'll fucking love it oh absolutely hilarious man absolutely hilarious but like i said maybe i'm in the minority here i honestly do think if i'm brian brendan sorry i'm a little bit annoyed you know i'm a little bit annoyed that my friends didn't invite me to be fair i'm a little bit pissed off personally i'd be a little bit jacked off a little bit jacked off I'm not going to lie. You've been a little bit jacked off. But hey, what can you do? What can you do? What are you guys saying in the chat? Joke is a terrible, terrible, terrible hack comedian, says um, Flora. He's crazy. He's dim he's deemed himself the comedy gatekeeper and just jump stalls. No, just jump stalls and yells. Yeah, it kind of is what it is, to be fair. I don't really mind Rogan, to be fair, as a comedian or as a guy. Um, I just think, you know... You just got to take what he says with a pinch of salt all the time. But I also think, weirdly enough, I said somebody else the other day, actually, I think Rogan should actually be more of a more of an um, inspiration or of a North Star, as Brendan says, to most comedians and others. Because he's not exactly talented at comedy. He's not exactly funny, funny. But he sort of like wheeled himself into being funny by pure hard work and hustle, right? He, pure, he basically got himself to the point where he's going on tour with fucking Dave Chappelle and shit, but he's not that funny. So I think a lot of comedians should look at Rogan's approach to comedy and basically copy that 
as opposed to looking at Chris Rocks and the Louis C.K.'s who were clearly people who were born with just the funny gene, right? They just had it from the jump. Um, Dave Chappelle, another good example. Um, those guys, you probably, or Dave, or even a David Tells and that, you, you shouldn't look at those guys as, I don't think, inspiration because they're just freaks. I feel like Rogan should be a far better like person to sort of mold your career around because I feel like he basically did it through pure sets and reps, getting up a lot all the fucking time, every single day, multiple times a day, and just bombing after bombing after bombing after bombing until he actually got halfway decent. And even then, he's not that decent, you know? So I feel like Rogan should be a far better inspiration for people than others. Maybe I've been wrong, but that's basically what I was thinking.